Welcome to Twisted Brush Pro Studio. In this video I'll be covering the auto masking effects and the auto masking brushes and how they're used and why uh, you'd want to use them. I'll be using version 19.14 uh, during this video. Uh, so to start with, um, you have basically a, a line drawing here as you can see. Uh, typically what I like to do when I'm working on uh, an existing drawing or a photo is I like to make a copy of it uh, so they have the original. Uh, in addition, when working with the auto masking brushes, I'll show you something a little later in the video where it's handy to keep a uh, starting image uh, untouched, un unedited uh, for creating masks uh, later on. Uh, so here to make a copy I'm going to hit Control C which copies this layer to the clipboard and Control V which uh, creates a new layer with that the image. So now we have two copies on, on these two layers of, of this image. Uh, in addition before we get started with the actual uh, auto masking what I'm going to do is uh, change my cursor to the uh, precision cursor. So I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences and select pre precision cursor and say OK. That gives me a little uh, cross here in the center of the cursor and that uh, makes it easier for uh, knowing where I'm positioning my cursor which uh, becomes important when trying to fill in areas within uh, uh, a drawing like this. So let's go and select one of the uh, brushes we'll be working with. I'm just going to click here and see the uh, in the Art Pro category, we have the Art Pro Auto Masking Paint uh, Art Set. In here, you see a number of different brushes. I'm going to select the uh, Pro Auto Mask Airbrush uh, to start with. The auto masking brushes and effects, uh, they basically automate some of the uh, usages of the existing mask tools that uh, you already have, specifically the, the Magic Wand Mask. Uh, it will automate uh, selecting the area, inverting it, and making it invisible. Uh, and do that automatically each time you start to, to paint a stroke with your brush. So uh, doing work on something like this would save you a, a lot of steps with switching be back and forth between a mask uh, wand tool and the brush. So let's just get started real quick. Uh, let's select the color. And what I'm going to do is uh, just click and start to paint. So we see immediately that I'm not worried about where I'm painting with this airbrush uh, within this area. The auto mask automatically uh, created the mask and kept the painting confined uh, to this area. One thing you'll notice, uh, let's zoom in a little bit here. So you see some white areas where the between the black and the white where there's gray where it didn't get filled in uh, and that's normal when there's anti-aliasing between uh, two colors um, so what I'm going to do is let's just do undo here and we'll come back to this brush control and you see this auto mask tolerance let's slide that up a little bit and that would be equivalent to the tolerance that you would see within the the magic wand mask tool here, the slider. Uh, and if you need to have more details about the, the various masking tools, there are uh, videos and uh, information and detail about these in the user guide. Alright, going back to the brush here, uh, just let's just stay zoomed in here for a second and try that again. And now you see with the tolerance moved up and we start to paint, we don't have those white areas. It fills in the gray uh, push straight up uh, to the black areas. So let's leave it like that for now and uh, let's undo and zoom out and we'll even make our brush a little bigger and start over. Okay so here we've we've done that. Okay so that's in itself you could think okay why wouldn't I just use the the tool for uh, paint bucket for filling an area. Well let's take a look. So we've did the filled in this pants so say we wanted to do some shading so here we could adjust the color and 
maybe even adjust the brush size smaller and do some shading at the edges and maybe add a little highlight as well so you see it remembered the mask area as if we would created the mask uh, as long as we're clicking within and starting a stroke within this area that mask will be retained uh, and just to verify that see we have here our indicator on our mask layer we, that the mask is active we could just click on that real quick and we see where our mask has been created just click in here again to come back to our image alright so let's go and now just start painting another area okay so again we did this and our painting is confined properly to that confined confined area and again we can even uh, get, you know do any kind of additional painting within this area we can select other brushes that um, they exa also exist within here and as long as we're clicking within this area that mask is valid uh, so that is kind of the the basics of how and why you'd want to use the auto masking it's saving you a lot of work uh, between uh, using the mask wand manually uh, and and switching back and forth and additionally there's some some powerful brushes in here that automate a number of things for you. We can just go and take a look at this uh, Pro Auto Mask Shaded Fill. Now that's this is going to look similar to the paint bucket, but it's going to do something uh, a little different. So here I'm just going to click, and you see it filled in the area and also immediately shaded the edges uh, for you. And you can go and select other colors and other areas and immediately start to work and within this brush you'll see there's a number of uh, sliders you can select also the tolerance uh, as you would in any of these and uh, the shading size etc so most of the auto masking brushes are within this this art set here however there are a couple other ones in some of the new art sets uh, or at least one other art set, the, the Art Pro image filters. We do have some auto masking brushes in here. So they work in a similar way um, in that they're cr automatically creating this mask for you that we've just looked at. I won't go in and show you these because this gets into another area with uh, using uh, image filters. So I had mentioned that uh, I was going to go back to the original image so we see if I hide this layer we go back to our original image and we see you know the the unedited uh, original so say you're editing this using your your auto mask fill brushes and decided you needed to go back in and edit an area well once you've once you've moved and selected a different area such as uh, when I did these fills you've created a new mask and we can look and see where the current mask is this is where the current everything is masked here except for this one area of the shoe so now if I wanted to click here and start to paint again in his in his pants area the problem is it's going to in effect behind the scenes be using the mask wand and it's going to find that the area the paint is really just not the full pant area here but uh, a smaller area and we'll try that real quick just to see so you could see well maybe in here in this case the tolerance was so high it did uh, properly fill it in but let's undo that and say we had a lower tolerance so here we see we didn't fill properly the entire pant area so let's undo set the tolerance back up and back to where we started let's uh, say we were working on on this area now oh, let's undo that tolerance is too high again it, it shows you the the issue with trying to go back to an area again once you've edited it uh, without going back to the original image to, to reselect the mask 
So let's go. Uh, we know we have a mask here created uh, basically the you know a lot because of the tolerance was high and we already did the painting. So let's go and just clear the mask to to start with. And we see now we've turned off the mask. Hide this la layer. Go here and we can start to paint. And now we've created a valid mask for just that paint area. We can confirm that. We can undo that and come back to our layer. And now we can do the edits that we wanted to do and say we wanted to uh, blend uh, this a little better with this uh, I guess I picked the uh, blended paint. So let's just do ben blended basic. Undo. And now we see we blended that better. And we were able to go back in and edit it by switching back and forth between the edited layer and the unedited layer. So it, gets a, it, it may seem a little complicated, but once you, once you understand how the, the auto mask brushes work, uh, and you're trying to do some some filling of line art such as this, uh, you'll see that it saves uh, an incredible amount of time to be able to uh, just paint into an area automatically. And for those who are uh, into editing their own brushes, can take a quick look. Uh, let's click on the uh, show up the effects panel. And this isn't something uh, for most users that they would need to worry about, but the brush effects that create uh, any brushes in Twisted Brush, uh, basically the two effects that are being used to cr do this auto masking are the auto mask and the auto mask tolerance uh, effects. Once those are, are turned on for a brush, uh, it basically becomes an auto masking uh, brush. And I won't go into any more details, I just wanted to, to point that out. So hopefully this information uh, will be helpful. Thank you.